This tower behind me stands ominously above Nike Park in Addison, Illinois, and has since 1957, almost 66 years ago. But what is it? This relic from the Cold War was part of the United States' Nike missile defense system and stood guard over the Chicago metropolitan area until around 1974 when Nike became obsolete in favor of more advanced missile defense systems. Located atop a hill, this was prime location for a military radar since it could see over everything in the area. And in 1957, when this was built, this whole area was nothing but empty open fields, making it a pretty easy pick. This radar, along with the second one that used to be located right here where I'm standing that was demolished many years ago, scanned the skies and stood ready to aid Nike Ajax and Hercules missiles as they would blast off their launch pads at what is now the Addison Public Works facility just a mile southeast of here at Mach 2.25 for Nike Ajax and Mach 4 for Nike Hercules. There were a few other generations after that that were a little bit more advanced, but neither of them really made it that far into service. As the missiles set sail for the sky, radars stationed at the Nike complexes would aid in taking them to their supersonic targets high up in the Earth's atmosphere, blasting them out of the sky, saving millions of Chicagoans and Americans from the wrath of nuclear weapons, if all went well. Each Nike complex came in pairs of two, uh, with one of them being a radar site, which is where I am now, and the other being a missile launch site. This one being designated C-72 for Chicago Gary Defense Area Site Number 72. Usually the two sites were separated by usually about one to three miles of distance. Around 265 sites just like this one were stationed all over the United States, mostly focused around major metropolitan areas and large military installations. Most of which have long since been demolished, but some of them remain, some of them in very poor condition, others in more upkept condition. If a missile were to cross into America from the Soviet Union, it would trigger a system of radars that spanned across Alaska and Canada and was known as the Dew Line, which stood for Distant Early Warning Line. Then NORAD and ARADCOM would set the country on an air raid alert. Missiles and retaliatory bombers would take off and fend off whatever enemies they could, spanning all the way from the Canadian Shield southward to the U.S.-Canada border, at which point any remaining missiles were left to fight Nike. As nuclear missiles or bombers crossed the horizon of the radars at each Nike site, just like this one right here, soldiers would prepare for battle. Elevators would lift the missiles out of their underground silos onto launch pads at ground level, where they would then be readied for launch. Carefully coordinated actions by the army men would send the missiles into the air, hopefully blasting the threats to bits. Here, just three and a half miles southeast of Nike Park is an actual Nike Ajax missile, the first generation of Nike missiles, with the one after that being Hercules. Uh, this is at Villa Park VFW post uh, number 2801, and this is a real missile. Uh, it's missing its launch gear, which would have stuck off the back end, but this is the real thing. This is exactly what would have gone into the skies all across the United States were nukes to come our way back in the Cold War. Fortunately, nowhere in the U.S. actually had to see these go into the sky for real, just some places did some practices with them. Unfortunately, I don't know what site this one came from, but this is a decommissioned Nike missile. Even considering the terror of the Cold War, with the Soviet Union and United States both constantly on edge, fearing a nuclear holocaust might greet them any day now, 
sometimes I think that maybe, just maybe, I'd pay those days a visit to see this technology doing just what it was meant to.